Hi everyone, my name is Caroline and today I would like to share my tips for preparing an MCAT test day routine. This is part three of my how to study for the MCAT video series, links for part one, essential MCAT study resources, and for part two, which practice tests and AAMC materials are worth it are above and below. Now, as I mentioned before in my previous videos, the MCAT is a serious marathon. With 230 questions to get through, the last thing you want to be worrying about during the exam is an upset stomach because you decided to try those new neon Pop-Tarts for breakfast on test day. Having a test day routine helps reduce the nerves leading up to and during the exam. It reduces variables, if you will, that may negatively impact your test taking performance. In my case, I probably only got four or five hours of real sleep the night before my MCAT because of my nerves. However, I woke up that morning on test day at 6.30 a.m., ate my oatmeal and eggs, drank my orange juice, listened to some Ariana Grande for hype, just like I had rehearsed for all my other practice full lengths before. And my test day routine is a big reason why I was able to leave the test room that day feeling like I had just completed yet another practice exam. I recommend you think about the following four things when creating your own test day routine. One, sleep. Two, diet and exercise. Three, taking breaks. And four, bathroom schedule. The CDC recommends that adults age 18 through 60 get seven or more hours of sleep every night. Of course, only you really know how many hours your body and brain need to properly function. But as a baseline, I would say you should get eight hours of sleep for at least three days before your test day. Speaking from personal experience, I don't think you can cure sleep deprivation in one night, so it's not going to do you any good if you are sleeping four hours Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, eight hours on Thursday, and then test on Friday. If you're staying up late trying to cram for the MCAT three days before your test, just stop. Don't do that to yourself. You cannot cram for a test that basically covers all of natural science. Also, be sure to factor in how long it takes for you to wake up and get your brain going. My exam started at 8 a.m., so I woke up at 6.30 a.m. because I found I needed one hour at least in order to get rid of that morning grogginess. If you really need a boost, I know some people recommend doing a crossword puzzle or multiplication tables or a Sudoku puzzle in the morning to really stimulate the brain. Food is fuel. I believe in the power of food to affect testing performance. Like, I know I can't eat a full Italian sub for lunch and then expect to be mentally sharp enough to answer questions in the afternoon. What we're looking for in your test day diet is nutritious, filling, and non-postprandial somnolence inducing, aka anti-food coma. Recommended test day foods include complex carbohydrates for long-lasting sustainable energy for example oatmeal whole grain bread fresh fruits vegetables beans and legumes although seriously beware their ability to make you bloat because let's be honest i don't think anybody wants to be trying to hold in their farts while they're taking the mcat quality protein to help keep you full, satisfied, and mentally alert during your seven and a half hours of testing. Examples include eggs, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, nuts. A lot of people like to recommend fish, especially for the omega-3s, but you know, I think turkey, chicken, ham are pretty good too. I'm also going to advocate for the fats in like avocado, peanut butter, dairy, which sometimes help keep me satisfied longer than protein. And don't forget water. 
Stay hydrated. Dehydration can lead to decreased cognitive function. So here's an idea of what I ate for test day and why. Also a quick note, I am emphasizing test day routine, but your diet may also impact your studying and ability to retain information too. So while I think it's really important to eat the right foods on test day, I think it's also important to practice healthy and balanced eating throughout your entire study process to fully optimize your performance. Which, speaking of healthy habits, I do also recommend consistent exercise throughout your study journey. It may be really tempting to sit and study for 10 hours straight, but aerobic exercise has been proven to positively affect cognitive function. And besides, going outside for a quick jog is a good excuse to not study. My opinion on taking breaks during the MCAT is that you should always take the full 10 minutes. You might be super eager to just be done with the test and therefore be tempted to skip your breaks, but I think the breaks are a good pause and reset for your brain. Also, when else would you be able to eat your snacks? As you're practicing your test day routine, experiment with how long of a break works for you, what snacks you like, and make sure that you can get whatever you plan to do, bathroom, snacks, water, done in 10 minutes. Okay, so this might seem like a weird thing to include in your routine, but hear me out. Imagine you're in the middle of a car's passage and suddenly what's that? A cramp, an urge to go poop, You tell me what's worse, holding it in and trying to get through the rest of the car section or dashing off to the restroom and spending valuable time sitting on the toilet. If you have a habit of going number two every day at 11 a.m., fam, you're gonna be in the middle of your MCAT at 11 a.m. You might wanna consider getting your bowels on an earlier or later schedule so as to not disrupt you during testing hours. Every routine takes time to be established, so my recommendation is to start building your habits four weeks out from your test date. I would definitely recommend that for every full-length practice test, pretend it's the actual MCAT. Carry out your test day routine. That way, when it comes to the real thing, you'll be totally prepared. Alright, that's about it for this video. Next time, I will be sharing MCAT test-taking strategies to make your life easier during the exam. And be on the lookout in the future for a video on taking CASPER, which is this relatively new standardized morality test that some medical schools are now requiring for their applications. As always, thank you for watching. Good luck studying, and see you in my next video. Bye!